Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another Shoe Snob blog unboxing video series, One Take Wonders. It's been a while. I've been busy. Lots going on in my life. So family, business, not pleasure, work. Family in the sense that I'm moving house. So that's been taking up a lot of my kind of spare time. Uh, super excited about that. That actually happens tomorrow. So uh, I wanted to try to sneak this in as I've been pushing and pushing and pushing them back just because there's so much going on. Um, and all of my free time has been taken doing other things outside of unboxing videos, which I have a few stacked up. So I'm going to try to knock them all out next week besides the ones I'm doing today. So let's hope that um, we can catch up and also do some podcasts. So thanks for your patience and hopefully you enjoy a new video with a new brand and some new ideas and some all around newness. So here we are with a sh brand that I've been interested in for a long time now. Curious to see uh, what they're like in person because you know, Instagram is not reality, but uh, it gives you an idea of reality. So let's check out the reality. So the brand in question is Indian Shoe Company Blackbird Shoemaker. <clears throat> now, Blackbird Shoemaker, in my opinion, has built this kind of buzz due to their pure seamless hole cut. Now, a seamless hole cut I'm not even gonna lie, I don't even know how you make one of those. I've seen it briefly. Uh, when I was studying shoemaking, that wasn't even a thing. <laughs> and so, uh, I've seen it done kind of here and there where they wrap the leather over the last and somehow cut it, I don't really know. It's impressive, it's cool, it's incredibly difficult from makers that, have, that know how to do it that tell me and just from what I know of shoemaking and tension and whatnot, it's got to be difficult as far as lasting goes to get that nice tight fit. So Indian shoemaker doing seamless hole cuts. And you won't even believe the price when I tell you, but I'll save that for later so you can stay curious. So they actually made me two pairs, one for the shoe snob and one for Mr. J Fitzpatrick, Justin Fitzpatrick. Uh, let's start with the other one that's not the seamless hole cut. Sorry, I, I know you're probably hoping for that, but I wanna show uh, two things here and I wanna, I wanna keep you interested till the end. All right, so first of all, nice sturdy black boxes. Well, a little bit of breakage here, but you know, it's very hard to make unbreakable boxes. And shipping companies these days don't treat the packages all that well. So Blackbird Shoemakers, hand welted shoes, handcrafted in India. Nice packaging. It's actually cleaner, um, but I had to break the packaging in order to try the shoes in order to give you fit feedback. So a uh, little gift here. Now, I don't know, Blackbird Shoemaker, I don't know if these horns come included in the price. I tried to read about it, but couldn't find that information. To be honest, with the prices they are and with how much I know these things cost, I doubt it. Um, so don't get your hopes up if you order a pair waiting for some horn uh, shoe horns because those aren't cheap. It, well. Those aren't cheap, at least where I source them from. I don't know if other places in the world sell them cheaper. All right, so first pair. Now this pair is called the Bemer X. Bemer. Now they have X's at the end of a lot of the names. I don't actually know what the X stands for. So it's just called the Bemer. And I presume it's called the Bemer as it is uh, similar to a classic Bemer model which I believe they took inspiration from. So your traditional cap toe brogued, uh, what do you call this, semi brogue? Semi brogue without that, I don't even, is it a quarter brogue if it doesn't have the heel counter? Probably, but there's broguing everywhere else. So I'm gonna just call it a semi brogue. So your classic semi brogue cap toe 
in the, uh, I believe this is stated as hatch grain that is supposed to kind of give the look of the Russian reindeer grain that Stefano had and used back in the day. I'm not sure if they still have access to that. They say it's limited quantities, uh, the whole story around the sunken ship and whatnot. Um, so yes, this is called the Bemmer. It comes in the, I believe it's a Horween hatch grain. Uh, it just says tan hatch grain. I would have to double check the site. I already can't recall. Um, I got this in my typical size, although it doesn't say it here. Pretty sure I got my typical UK six and a half. There's no markings actually on the shoe either. So I don't know if standard models come like that or if maybe they just made those specifically for me. But my typical UK six and a half, US seven and a half fit just fine in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't have taken another size. I do believe I have some bells and whistles that you wouldn't get standard like these Triumph toe taps that are actually branded, which is a nice little touch. Um, I again didn't see add-ons for those in the product page, but they're probably somewhere else on the site. Those definitely don't come in the price uh, for a standard ready to wear model. Now, um, so Blackbird's claim to fame is that they are hand welted. So right here it says Blackbird hand welted. They got a fiddle back design here which I believe is partly from the shank, to be honest, and then kind of built around that. Um, beveled waist here, quite a substantial heel. Just checking it all out. Soft uh, fudging on the welt. Everything looks tip top, to be honest. I don't know the name of this last. It doesn't actually tell me that, but I'm sure you can check that out from the reference on the site. Now, so I have my ideas here. This is the pair that I checked out. They are fully lined sock liners. Let me just explain, because I don't think I've ever explained this before. The leather piece that you find on top of the insole is not the insole. It's called a sock liner or a leather liner, or whatever you want to call it. But not to be confused with the actual uh, insole, which is a leather piece that is natural color that looks like raw leather. And sorry, I'm just checking for the actual telltale signs of hand welted. Um, but it's pretty dark. So I normally don't like full sock liners. I always feel like putting a full sock liner means you're hiding something. I like to see that in so I want to see the markings if it has markings, if it doesn't have markings. Uh, I see faint markings which should be an indicator that they are actually hand welted. Um, the markings <coughs> that you have normally come from the pulling of the thread uh, these are soft, so and I can't see very well, but they feel substantial like a solid hand welted shoe. Um, got a pretty good rubber piece on the heel there, which is very interesting. I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. It's been a long time since I've done unboxing videos. It's almost like I forgot how to do my own videos. Um, I also just don't want to ramble, so I'm trying to give you as much info as I can quickly because we got to look at the other pair, the pair I'm sure many of you are waiting for. All right, so I do have some critiques, but I'm going to wait until I check out the other pair before I get into that. So let's just set these aside for now. Great shoe. Let me tell you the price. The price for this lovely hand welted Oxford with hatch grain, which is good quality it's 250 dollars i think that takes the cake for the lowest price hand welted shoe in the industry 250 imagine that all right dun, dun, dun. again 
I had to break the packaging so I could try it. Another shoehorn. I'm just gonna destroy the packaging now as it doesn't even matter. Did, forgot to mention, nice black bags. Branding, very cohesive, good quality. Nice presentation all around, extra tissue paper, everything is double tissue, all very nice, all to keep the shoes safe from all the rattling around they do during shipment. The seamless hole cut. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive when I tell you the price. So, again, this is called the Constance, and this is Chestnut Museum calf. I believe this is from Zonta, because it looks like the dark gold that Zonta does. They call it Chestnut. Um, huh. Noticing little details I didn't notice before. Sole is very similar. Fiddle back, blackbird, hand welted, nice heel. Uh, toe taps, I do believe those are not included. This is made on a different rounded last. Also fit me well in my standard size. Uh, really nice heel cup. I don't know if that's great for everybody because I have pretty narrow heels, but it really gripped the heel nicely. Like I felt nice and secure. Um, I don't know if I'm imagining this, I don't think I am, but this one has a very slight pitch on it. These heels are, these heels are definitely worked on. Um, it's not just the, the stack put on uh, and, and has its shape. These are touched, these are trimmed. And this looks like a nice leather heel stack. And they even have, this will be hard to see in this video, but we'll check it out in the up close details. They have a notch on the heel here, which is a nice telltale sign of handwork. And it's a uh, overall high quality shoe. Now I'm gonna tell you the price. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the price here, which is gonna knock your socks off. Seamless hole cuts, pitched heels, uh, these are actually very slight beveled, barely beveled at all, which is interesting. But the notch on the heel, which is a handmade sign, a true shoemaker sign, $300. And if this is Museum Calf from Zonta, which is expensive, that's an insane price. Insane price. I don't know how they do it. I have my thoughts, of course. Um, I know how they do it. It's, it's, it's simple. They're facts. If leather is a fixed price across the world, because tanneries, unless you're buying millions of meters, are giving you all the same price, it simply must be the cost of labor. Because shoes are labor, uh, leather, profit margin. So unless they're really sacrificing their profit margin, but to be a surviving business, you have to be able to cut one of those. And I'm sure that labor is where the price helps in the sense that dictate the final price can be so low. Uh, $300 hand welted seamless hole cuts. Insane. Tried them on, last fits great, comfortable. There is one thing I notice about Indian makers, uh, and, and this was also the same thing with Bridlin. I don't find their arches to be accurate. Their arches are very like short. Um, I feel the hump here in the heel, which falls short. You know, I should have that. Uh, I should have that cupped feeling further and so it's funny because when i look at it it doesn't look unbalanced to be honest but i do get that sensation that it's not in the right place and it i, I noticed it and i noticed it with with all of them um with with bridlin as well sorry i'm getting a delivery uh 
and and it's hard to explain. I don't know what they're what the arch is doing in that spot. Sorry, I keep getting interrupted with people uh, coming to the shop, even though technically I'm closed. Um, but it, and it wasn't uncomfortable. But granted, I, I just tried them on. I didn't walk all day, so. I'd be curious to know about that. I just feel like the arches should be a little bit moved forward. And I don't have particularly crazy long arch. Most normal shoes fit uh, just fine. But it's something in there where I feel like a hump right here at the, at the very like front of my heel as opposed to a little bit more forward where the arch lays. I mean, I've been wanting to see them, and I gotta say, it's impressive. I don't, the only thing I really don't like are these thick laces. I, I find them quite, I don't wanna say unattractive, but a thinner lace would be more attractive, a little dressier. These are a little bit thick, um, and I think that a one or two millimeters thinner would really be the icing on the cake for this shoe impressive stuff i mean for 250 and 300 dollars for hand welted it's hard to beat it and while it has again its things you know some there is some interesting shapes to this pattern in my opinion like it's got a really short forefoot a really long mouth um I do think there could be some better balancing, but if you take a $250 shoe like this and you compare it across any other $250 shoe you're gonna find in your average department store or wherever, this is blowing that out of the water. Um, because most shoes at 250 are probably cemented cheap garbage either made maybe in China, maybe in some of the cheaper factories in Italy. Uh, and, and really, you're just paying for ideas there and brand names, you know? you know? Let's just say Nordstrom's Nordstrom line. Very basic Blake cemented shoes. I don't even know what they retail for anymore. It's been years since I worked there. They were 250 when I was there. They're probably 400 now, and, and they're just, they're gonna be nothing compared to a shoe like that. So, it's impressive. Uh, it's impressive that they can be this good uh, for such a low price. Um, and when I say this good again, I'm not comparing this to a, a Gaziano and Guerlain, uh, to a, a brand where everything is flawless. I'm always comparing it against its price. Uh, a $300 seamless hole cut, no, no brainer, um, you know, and a real snob who loves to go online and critique just because they have nothing better to do than that, you know, might say, well, look at all these ripples in the leather here from the last thing. But again, this is the hardest shoe to make for to make this flawless. You're going to go spend seven times that amount somewhere else, you know. Most makers that can even achieve a seamless hole cut aren't charging less than $2,000 for it. So, you know, again, manage your expectations. Don't buy the shoe and then complain that there's wrinkles here because you only spend 300 bucks. It's, this is not a $2,000 shoe. It's an amazing $300 shoe. And it feels good. Uh, it feels good. The leather's good. The sole feels solid. You have all these details that you can achieve. Toe taps, pitched heels. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to beat at that price. Definitely, definitely impressive stuff for 300 bucks. So, if you've been curious about this brand and you've been waiting to hear from somebody like me or somebody that you trust, I can now say that good price for what you're getting um the people are nice i've been back and forth with them they're very responsive they're very nice people i definitely 
I definitely think they're gonna do well, especially if they continue to progress just like Bridlin has. And uh, I'm curious to see what Indian shoemakers continue to bring to the shoe industry. Because like I've said a million times, doesn't matter what country you're from, all that matters is the passion you have. And these people are hungry. People in, in, the, in the East are hungry to, to get involved in the shoemaking world and be competitive and something to contend with. And I dare say they are achieving that. So, yeah, I'll look forward to seeing what else they bring to the table. Um, more lasts, more models, etc. Maybe slightly more different arches or more fluid shapes. Uh, but yeah. Great stuff, great stuff at these incredible prices. So definitely check them out at 300 bucks. You should definitely be grabbing a pair. They are pretty darn good, I dare say myself. Thank you as always for tuning in. Stay tuned for more as I come back next week after having moved house, I can put that story behind me and now start getting back to uh, doing my videos. Every Wishing everybody a fantastic weekend. Thank you as always, take care, bye bye.